we're going to um, start by thanking our sponsors. First of all, we'd like to thank the Lakeline judging team for, um, for doing this. And I'm sure you guys are gonna learn lots and be able to uh, take home some really great knowledge and tips. Uh, the second thing we want to tell you about is the provincial judging competition, which is happening on March 11th up at uh, Lakeland College in conjunction with their Canadian Western judging finals. Um, it is on the website if anybody is looking for more information about it. A really good opportunity for um, a, a great judging contest uh, to test your skills. Uh, before this was a um, an event that you had to qualify for, but I want to make sure that you all understand that um, anybody can come to this any age. So um, just know that that's happening this year. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors our, that help us put this on for you. The Diamond Clover sponsor, the Alberta government. Emerald Clover is Alberta Recycling, Link, ATB, the Calgary Stampede Foundation, and Chartered Professional Accountants, CPA, and UFA. Our Gold Clover sponsors are AFSC, PV Mart, Save on Foods, Silver Clover is Service Equipment, and our Bronze Clover, Alberta Beef Producers, Bayer, Gas Inc., or Gas Alberta Inc., Lakeland College, MCS Net, Neutrina, and Viterra. And our 4-H, oh, and I, and the 4-H national partner is Bayer. So without them, things like this couldn't happen for you. Um, there's a question in the chat that is provincial judging competition not just for juniors? No, it's not. Or for seniors, it's for all ages. So tonight I'm going to pass this over to uh, the students and the judging team. Um, from Lakeland College, and I'd like you guys to introduce yourselves, and then you can go ahead and get started. Sounds good. I think Sarah will just uh, start screen sharing here, and then we'll get started from there. Absolutely. Can you guys see that? Perfect. So thank you everybody for having us. We're super excited to be here with you tonight. Hopefully we can teach you some things and help you to improve your judging skills a little bit. <clears throat> My name is Sarah McDonald. I am a third year student here at Lakeland College. I originally took my crop technology diploma and now I'm back for my agribusiness diploma. I grew up on a commercial cattle ranch in Southern BC um, and was a 4-H member for 11 years. And most of my judging experience is through 4-H where I was a beef and ranch horse member uh, out in BC. I think, Kaylee, are you with us tonight? I am. Is okay. my speaker and camera working fine? Yep, you're good. Okay, perfect. So mm -hmm. I'm Kaylee Wersta. I'm from Elk Point, Alberta. I come from a purebred herd of three, um, 250 head, a purebred Charlotte, Hereford, and Black Angus. I'm currently enrolled in the egg business program at Lakeland, taking the uh, marketing and communications route which has been really good. And I'm excited to go back to the farm and kind of take over and do that, so. And then uh, actually Hillary Sauter is not with us tonight, but she will be for the next three weeks. Uh, she just had another commitment that she had to do tonight. But so moving on to me, um, I'm Bobby Foster. This is my third year at Lakeland College, uh, third year on the judge team as well. 
So I started with my animal science technology diploma. I was majoring in uh, beef science. I graduated from that last spring and I am now in my Bachelor of Agriculture Technology degree here uh, minoring in livestock science. Um, I'm originally from Dropmore, Manitoba, and I come from a small purebred herd of Herefords, and I have recently just started my own herd of Black Angus. Um, yeah, we're very excited for this, and I hope you guys enjoy. So before I things, I'd like to get to know you guys a little bit. So. Well, um, I'll just call out your name and if you want to turn your camera on, great. If you're not comfortable with that, we totally understand. But if you could just tell us your name, age, uh, hometown, kind of your 4-H experience and maybe something you love to do in your spare time. So first person I have here is Sophia. So I'm Sophia. I I'm 17 as of tomorrow. I am from Lacombe, Alberta. My 4-H club is Western 4-H Multi Club, and I'm in the Shady Project. And one thing I love to do in my time is to ski. Awesome. Thanks, Sophia. Ashlyn? Hi, my name is Ashlyn Trefanenko. I'm 17 years old. I'm from St. Paul, Alberta, and I'm in the St. Paul 4-H Multi Club. I do the Beef Project, and one thing I like to do in my spare time is play basketball. Thank you. Alexandra and Waylon. Hold on. Um, my name is Alexandra. I'm 16. Um, from Grand Prairie. We are in the Grand Prairie 4-H Multi Club. One thing I love to do in my spare time is sleep, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm Waylon. I'm 14. Also in Grand Prairie and in the multi Grand Prairie Forage Multi Club, and I like to read in my spare time. Awesome, thanks, guys. Uh, Grace. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm 15 years old. I'm from Barhead, and I'm in the Camp Creek Forage Club. And something I like to do on my spare time is ride my mare Holly. Awesome. Tori? Uh, my name's Tori. I'm 14 and I live in Delmead, Alberta. Um, I'm in the Bow Valley Beef and Multi Club. And one thing I do in my spare time is hockey. Sounds like fun. We have the person called iPad. Do you want to tell us who you really are? <laughs> Um, me? Uh, yeah. Bailey, uh, I'm 14 from Beaver Lodge. I'm in the Beaver Lodge 4-H Beef Club, and I like to draw in my spare time. Oh, thank you. Davis? Yeah, my name is Davis. I'm 15. I'm from Carstairs. And uh, I'm in, I've done a whole bunch of beef, um, beef, I've been in 4-H for six years. And um, I'm in the Carstairs 4-H Beef Club. And I like to play a bunch of school sports in my spare time. Thank you. Bailey? My name is Bailey. I'm 14. I'm from Pinoca. I'm a part of the Christian 4-H Multi Club and I love to hang out with my friends and family in my spare time. Awesome, thank you. Clara? Oh, my name's Clara. I'm 17 years old and I'm from Pritis, Alberta. 
I'm in the Millerville Stockland Beef Club, and I used to be in the Millerville Horse Club. And something I like to do in my spare time is work on my 4-H calves. Thank you. Tori? Tannis? Tannis, I'm 16. I live at, in Nanton, Alberta. I'm in the Longview 4 H Beef Club. Cool, thank you. My name's Tegan. I'm 14. I'm from Acme, and I'm in the Neo Forge Multi Club, and I like to rodeo. Awesome. Tavian? Hi, my name is Tavy. I am from Barhead, Alberta. I'm 14 years old. I'm in the Camp Creek Multi 4 H Club doing horse project. And in my spare time, I like to work with show cattle. Awesome, thanks. Wyatt? Uh, my name is Wyatt. In hometown of Valley View, Alberta. I'm in the Wild Rose 4 H Multi Club and I enjoy dirt biking. Thank you. My name's Lynn Cuthbertson. I'm 16 years old and I'm from Valley View, Alberta. I'm from the Wild Rose 4 H Multi Club and I enjoy dirt time. Awesome. Thanks. Jane. Miley. Um, hello, we are JC, Miley, and Wyatt. Um, I'm Jean. Watt is 15 as of today, and Miley is 13. Acme, and we are all in the Soul 4-H Beef Club. And in our spare time, we all enjoy playing volleyball and basketball and working with our Thank you for joining us, and happy birthday, Wyatt. Elle? Hi, my name's Elle. I'm 16. I've been in the Balzac 4-H Beef Club for eight years, and I live in Airdrie, and I like to ski in my spare time. Awesome. Taya? Hi, my name is Taya. I'm 18 years old. I live in Lethbridge. I'm in the Wild and Wooly Sheep Club, and I like to ride my horse and work with my sheep. Sounds like fun. Thank you. Jaylene? I'm Jaylene. I'm 14 years old. I'm from Grand Prairie. I'm in the Grand Prairie 4-H Multi Club, and I like to ride my horse in my spare time. Awesome. Scott? Hey, I'm Scott Anderson. I'm 15. I'm from Delmead. I'm in the Bow Valley Beef and Malty 4-H Club, and I play hockey. Awesome. Max? Hi, my name is Max Burris. Uh, I'm from Black Falls, Alberta, and I'm in the East Lacombe Beef Club. Um, one thing I like to do in my spare time is play hockey and work with my 4-H calves. Cool. Reese? Um, hi, my name is Reese Wildman. I'm 15 and I'm from Sangudo, Alberta. I'm in Beef 4 H and I show cattle outside of 4 H, so that's what takes up most of my spare time. I bet. Sammy? Hi, my name is Sammy. I am 15. I'm from Seven Persons and I'm a part of the Seven Persons 4 H Beef Club. And one thing that I like to do in my spare time is ride my horses. Welcome. Anna? I'm Anna. I'm 14. I'm from Picture Butte, Alberta. I'm in the Turin 4 H Club. And one thing I like to do in my spare time is read. Cool. Mark? Hi, I'm Mark. I'm uh, 15 years old. I'm from I'm Airdra, and I'm in the Balzac 4 H Beef Club. And uh, in my spare time, I usually just like to be around cattle and farm. Understandable. I think there's probably a lot of people that relate. <laughs> Max? OK, 
Okay, Rael. Hi, I'm Rael. I'm 17. I'm from Erskine, Alberta. Um, I'm also in the Erskine 4-H Beef Club, and I like to hang out with my calves in my spare time. Fun. Kara? I'm Kara. House. I'm 16 years old. I'm from Lougheed, Alberta. I'm in the Battle River 4-H Beef Club, and I'm a spare time like to work with my cows. Welcome. S. Seward. Uh, I'm Leslie Seward. I'm 14. I live in Cayley. I'm in the 4-H Foothills Sheep and Multi, and I like to play my instruments in my spare time. Oh, welcome. And Charlotte. I think Charlotte said her mic is broken in the chat. Oh, okay. I can't see the chat. I have too many things oh, open. So <laughs> thanks. No well, thank you guys. Um, if I missed anybody that wanted to introduce themselves, please speak up. Sometimes my list kind of moves around. So I didn't miss anybody. Um, we won't do that every time. I know that takes a while, but it's nice for us to get to know a little bit more about you guys, um, since we are going to be spending one evening for the next couple of weeks together. So with that, I guess we'll get in things. Um, uh -oh. There we go. So the agenda for tonight, uh, we're going to be addressing the dress code taking sufficient notes for giving oral reasons. And then once you have those notes, how do you actually form oral reasons that can impress a judge and hopefully allow you to place? So first thing we're gonna start off with is attire. Uh, obviously, this is something you wouldn't want to be wearing to a judging competition. Um, you can see on the left side here, this fellow's wearing some pretty grubby jeans. It looks like he might have gone out to do chores and maybe got ran over by a hungry show steer or something. I'm not sure what happened to him, but he probably wants to change his jeans before he heads off to his judging competition because that doesn't look super professional. As well, on the right, um, this is a cute outfit if you were maybe going shopping with some friends, but her jeans are ripped. They are, they're kind of faded in spots. They don't look super professional. Uh, her shirt is kind of half tucked in. Um, it's not all the way tucked in. Um, and then she's got a cardigan on, which can be professional, but if you had an option to dress it up, you would definitely want to take that route. It's better in a judging competition uh, and really in anything to, to overdress, um, rather dress, you, you want to be the person that looks more professional than they need to be, um, rather than the person that shows up in their dirty chore jeans. So then taking a look at the attire that um, does look professional. So as you can see in this photo, um, blazers are really nice for girls. Um, they kind of put your outfit all together. They make you look really professional. Uh, make sure that your hair is done, you're well presented. Um, people take you more seriously if you are well presented. And nice, nice shoes, you definitely don't want like dirty cowboy boots, that kind of stuff. Um, something that you don't wear very often that you can kind of show off a little bit and you want to walk out there and feel confident and proud of yourself because you look good. So yeah, and then for um, for men, just nice western shirts work, um, button-ups, ties, as you can see. Uh, there's a couple guys in this photo that have vests on. That works really nicely as, as well. This picture was actually our judging team at Agribition this year, so there might be a few familiar faces there. I also want to say, as we're going through this, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask us while we're on the slides. You absolutely don't have to wait till the end. So if you want to clarify something or talk a little bit more about it, please just, yeah, raise your hand in the, the feature or turn your mic on and ask us a question. Okay. 
when it comes to taking notes, there is multiple ways you can do it, of course. Uh, for me personally, I have a notepad, sort of what looks like in the middle. I usually have my list of, uh, I mark and I have characteristics that and what that animal looks like. So if it's a heifer, heifer, I will say the like I would, with the corresponding number if she is the really dark red heifer or if she's the one who has big goggles. Maybe she has a feather neck down her back or even like stockings like if she's got a lot of white on her feet. Those are all the characteristics that can help you to remember that class. And when you're taking notes, you really want to be able to picture that class in your mind because sufficient note taking will help you later on when you're trying to form your oral reasons. And so there is a couple different ways you can lay out your note pages. Um, it's, I guess, sort of a little bit hard to see on these unless they're zoomed in a little bit. Uh, just the one in the middle, it has one four or down the left hand side has your grants and your faults on the right. So for me, what I would do is I take the first couple minutes to determine my placing for the class and then write on the left hand side, uh, say I chose two, one, four, three. I'd write them that way. And then I would, why would my second place be better than my first? Um, or, and then naturally that second place has to be into second and not first. And you kind of go down the line that way, making it very clear and you want to be very confident with it. So just, I guess, note taking and laying out the notes, however it works for you, like find a system. And if you have to print out um, like right hand side, if you print something out like that, you want them to do that or if you want to write them out beforehand, because then it's like almost that. And I know a lot of people who do that and it helps a lot when, for sure when you're first getting started, it just keeps everything flowing. I also want to add Kaylee thing that I found with taking notes is it's really a trial and error to discover what works best for you. Um, I've been judging for 11 years now and this year at the start of our judging season I guess I totally redid my note layout because I just decided that the one I'd been doing for the past 10 years wasn't working for me anymore so I redid it and there's nothing wrong with that if it's not working for you change it up until you find something that that does work for you. So like Kaylee kind of alluded to, regardless of how you lay your page out, the biggest thing you want to make sure when you take notes is that you use enough detail that you can basically paint a memory picture so that when you go to give your oral reasons, regardless of how long after you judge the class, you can remember that class, have that image in your head so that when you're giving your reasons, you create that image for your judge as well. Uh, and take enough notes that you have enough reasons. You're way better off to be overprepared and take more notes than you actually need than to take very few notes and be giving your oral reasons and go, oh shoot, I do not have enough written down to actually describe this class. So, Feel free who any, who, for whoever would like to um, maybe raise your hand and kind of come up with some ideas of what notes you would write down to ensure that you can picture these animals di differently in your head. So if you were doing oral reasons on this class, what would you write about the heifer on the left compared to the heifer on the right that would make you remember her? Does anybody want to give that a shot? If not, that's okay. Okay, Alexandra and Waylon, I see. So for like the one on the left, I'd make sure to remember like, cause there's she or he, I can't remember what you said, but uh, doesn't have stockings on the back. 
on our back two legs. So make sure you remember that. And that's a distinctive feature. And same with her eye. She's got a black eye instead of a white eye. So those are like two distinctive features. And then talk about specific things about them, I suppose. Yes, for sure. That was really good. Thank you very much for speaking up. So yeah, so a couple of things that you could say, uh, like you had said, stockings. Uh, she doesn't quite have as much white on her as the other heifer compared to her. Uh, she's got a little darker goggle on her eye there. So that's a really good word to remember there for Herefords, especially. A um, little darker red, that kind of thing, uh, just for like phenotype wise, so that when you're going into that oral reason class, you remember which heifer was which. And it's a little bit trickier with animals that are the same breed sometimes. Uh, it gets especially tricky when they're all black <laughs> because that's when the problems happen. But even things like fluffy ears, write that down, remember it, don't say it, but remember it. Like, so just so that you can paint a picture in your head so that you know which animal you're talking about. It makes it a lot easier to remember and classify the animals differently if you remember exactly what animal you were looking at. So when it comes to four reasons, what, and feel free to speak up again to whoever, what do you guys think makes for a strong set of oral reasons? Uh, Rayel, do you have your hand up? It's hard for me to see. I'm just on my phone. Yeah, I do. Um, okay. I think that strong oral reasons are um, you have lots of details to back you up and points of both faults and grants for each animal so that you can build up um, what you like and really dislike to set them apart from each other, especially as you place them. And then, um, like you guys said already, the details to paint a picture for the judges, you want to make sure that they can see what you're talking about, even if they haven't seen the animal themselves. Yes, definitely. That is a very good point. You want to be able to explain the class like the judge has never seen them before. And if you can do that, that makes it for a very strong set of oral reasons. Uh, does anybody else have any ideas? You can carry on with this slide if you want, Kaylee. Sure, yeah. So your oral reasons should include an introductory statement. So it should be, I placed this class of Hereford heifers, one, two, three, four, for the following reasons. That would, is a very basic introductory statement. And then you want to identify the class completely and correctly. So that would be um, Hereford heifers, bred heifers, uh, yearling bulls, whatever the class, like the judging competition will usually tell you what class it is. So that is the one, that is the name of the class you want to use in your oral reasons. You want to compare your three pairs. So your top pair, your middle pair, and then your bottom pair, and then your conclusion statement and be logical and easy to follow. So your conclusion statement would be for these reasons, I placed this class of Herford heifers, one, two, three, four. And so the way I kind of remember it, if you can have an introductory and a conclusion, that is basically 10 points each out of the 50 points. So whenever I guess I mark cards for other judging competitions, if you have a introductory statement and a conclusion statement, you automatically get 20 points. Where the 30 points come in is how you compare the three pairs. So presentation is another big important part of giving oral reasons. Uh, you can see this little clip art picture we've put here and I don't, I don't think the speaker is very engaging because apparently his audience is falling asleep. And obviously we don't want our judge to be having a snooze fest while we're giving reasons. So in order to prevent that situation, you wanna make sure that your presentation is strong. And in order to do that, you want to be clear and easy to hear, not speak too fast. Uh, if you start rambling, not only do you get too fast and hard for the judge to understand, but that's also when you're liable to make mistakes, whether it be on your placings or your reasons. Um, so just 
take a breath and speak not too slow, obviously, but just speak at a normal pace um, and make sure that the judge can understand you. You wanna make eye contact with your judge as well. Don't burn a hole through their head, staring them down, but make eye contact and make sure that your judge knows that you're in, um, and when you show engagement, then they will be engaged as well. You wanna stand comfortably. Um, Standing comfortably kind of looks different for everybody depending on who you are as a person. But a good rule of thumb is to put your uh, dominant foot, yeah, I guess like dominant side. Um, so in my case, I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna put my right slight head left. That means I'm not standing completely square. So I have a like less chance of kind of swaying or rocking. Um, you have a, a stronger stance when you've got one foot ahead. You all want to make sure that your hands are doing something that they're kind of out of the way. So if you're someone that tends to fidget or needs to move, then a good idea is to put your hands behind your back and then you can kind of lock your hands together and like twirl your thumbs or flick your fingers or do something that you can have some movement without it being distracting. Um, if that's not something that's a problem for you, then you can just hold your hands in front um, and stand comfortably that way. It's totally up to whatever works for you. Uh, you might also be someone that speaks um, and kind of uh, boisterous and throw your hands around, which is totally uh, in some cases. But when you're standing close to a judge, that's maybe not a great idea. It makes the judge a little uncomfortable swinging your hands. Um, so that would be another reason you'd want to interlock. So in my case, um, I know I tend to play with my hair. So that's one thing I really had to focus on to make my head back and my hands like lock together so that I don't start flicking my hair all over the place. You also want to avoid repetition. Um, not only does it get kind of boring for your judge, but if you continue to repeat the same reasons, your judge starts to question your qualifications a little bit. If every pair that you talk about um, is stronger because he has, like that steer has a better spring of rib, your judge is maybe gonna think, does this kid know any other reasons or is spring of rib all we got? Uh, and finally, just speak confidently and convincingly and use proper pronunciation. If you are up there and you use words that you are able to say and you speak confident and convincingly, even if you're not totally confident in the class, you're going to score well. Um, you know, you maybe aren't an expert in that class, but just give it your best shot and speak with confidence and you'll come across in a presentable and successful way. Okay guys, so this actually is the end of our presentation for the first week. Um, I know we didn't get into anything crazy in depth yet, but don't worry that will be coming for next week and the next couple after that. Um, right now, is there any questions or any comments? Okay, if not, um, another thing is if anybody has any suggestions or something that they would like to see in the next couple weeks, please feel free to share that with us and we can for sure add it into our PowerPoints. Um, we have got some pretty cool stuff for you guys planned, but if there is something that you would like to see, please feel free to tell us and uh, we would love to touch on that for you. So feel free to just write in the chat or put your hand up and uh, tell us that if you would like. Or even if it's an area that you want to improve on, uh, if there's some way we can help you improve on that, we'd love to. There's a, there is a question in the chat. Girls, did you see that? Yeah, I'm just looking at that right now. Okay. Yeah. If I need to have notes, is that okay for an intermediate? Yes. Yeah. 
you want to talk on that Bobby yeah I can sorry um <laughs> honestly I forgot that my mute was on <laughs> um I it is okay um but as you start advancing into senior um the more practice you get without notes for sure helps and I know for me coming into a judging club after um 4-H level I I was honestly I was very used to using notes when I was in 4-H um, senior I I kind of started to stray away from it a bit obviously but I I didn't really I wasn't as confident so I guess my only thing is the more that you practice without notes even if it's standing in front of a mirror and the best way to learn is like having a class of uh, whatever you in intermediate um, and even maybe start from going from that to having a few words on a paper and then if you had to glance down then you can and then maybe move to note cards like it's not going to happen suddenly but with the work it definitely does and then the more confident you get um, the easier it'll be I don't know if anybody else has any comments on that I guess I do exactly what Bobby said just it's a lot of practice and it'll take some time but eventually you do get more comfortable. And I mean, if you want to be competitive, um, say at Western Canadian judging or any other competition, if you're an intermediate and you don't use notes, and even if you do stumble in competition, you will get extra points for not using your notes because your judge will see that as a sign that you know what you're talking about and at least have the confidence to be able to try it without your notes. So I know that would be, I guess, an advantage to you if you don't use your notes in competition. Um, so if you can get to that point as still an intermediate, that would, yeah, I mean, competition, you're golden. That was a great question. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Is there any specific, um, like, animal types that you guys would like to see. Um, I mean, we're gonna try to touch on as much as we can because hearing from your 4-H clubs, uh, I hear beef, horses, sheep. I'm not sure if I missed this, but um, I think that's the gist, but we can for sure touch on like pigs or anything else too, if you guys like. Um, so yeah, species too, if anybody would like to see that as well. I think the more that you can, t I don't tell them about other species than beef sometimes is going to be better because I think, um, is there any kids here that, you know, are, there's a few sheep kids I know on, you know, well versed in the other species. So does any of the kids have anything to add to that? Horses are usually another hard one to judge. Yeah, like um, I know when I came to college too, I I had never judged a horse in my life. So that was a really cool learning experience for me. And uh, we'll try to touch on as much as we can. And um, we'll also touch on, I'm blanking, Sarah. What is that? Like the, oh. Terminology? No, um, I mean like. I was going to say, if, you're, if you can't come up with terminology when that's literally a word anyways <laughs> no I mean like like when you go we go to a judging competition and there's a a sentence that we have to pick like say the best pair of jeans for what's that called again oh consumer classes consumer classes so yeah and I had also never done that either so I think that's really important for um this age group to learn is kind of like choices classes too because really we judge every day you judge what you're gonna put on in the morning you judge what you're gonna eat for lunch so um those skills are really important as well Well, maybe if you guys don't have any thoughts uh, right now, we will say next week we're going to work on some terminology and, and a few other things before we dive into practicing some classes. So maybe think about it over the next week. And if something comes to mind while you're outside hanging out with your cows, since most of you said that's what you enjoy doing, 
uh, write it down in your phone. And next week when we're back together, let us know and we'll work on it for the following weeks. Okay, perfect. Um, just so all uh, the members know that uh, the same link, you use the same link for next week, guys, you won't get another link um, in the in your email, you use the same one. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at seven.